Hello. We warned you. We told you we'd be doing this tonight. Hopefully we won't have any uh, the shitty problems we've been having the last couple nights with the, the internets. People like you're just stay home and stay off the internet. That's what Governor Andrews. Let's well, see. Todd is in the mix. It's gonna happen. We're gonna be good. Oh, bizarre! Bizarre. Are we live? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Corey. Hi. Hi. Hello, Adam. Hello, Austin. Thank you guys for being there. Wonderful to see you guys, as always. I am bathed in ethereal light. I see that. It's, it's very angelic. Thank you, Corey. Yeah. Like the effect I was going for. Yeah. I'll go ahead and get that up there. <laughs> that's become my favorite part of the live stream <laughs> it's great it, it's it's you can't add more than more than two people on one of these but like i feel like oh, i feel like we got a third yeah it's like austin's here with us yeah i feel good about the whole situation yeah <laughs> what what's happening folks what's what's happening yeah. Your, with your, Tell us what's going on. Your your Sundays. By the way, Corey, I'm switching it up today because it's Sunday, the Lord's Day. I'm drinking wine. I have a delightful Pinot Grigio. Well, that's beautiful. I'm 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 not switching it up. I'm back on the dance. Hell yeah! I'm drinking out of my my little uh, modified butt plug glass. <laughs> Those glasses do. Do have a uh, remarkably similar shape to the classic butt plug. The only thing they're missing is a little point at the top. Yeah, they just. Well, you've seen those butt plugs. I think they. I, I assume they unscrew from the top, and you, so you can put like a little little fish in there, like a little betta fish. And I, I, I suspect somebody like their, you know, dishes weren't done, and they didn't want to bother with it, and they they took the old uh, betta fish butt plug and and drink bourbon. Of it, and that man was Elijah Craig. God bless him. Yep. Well, you know, you, you can actually, you know, you get one, you could put anything inside a butt plug. You know, if you get the if you get the clear type, you know, there, get the kind with the pop off top. You can you can throw anything in there. Yeah, corn, anything. Corn, a uh, replica of the Declaration of Independence. Um, foot, 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 foot. Hello, foot foot. Yeah, she did not make an appearance last night. Uh, here's here's something in the in the old box. Yay. Okay. Uh, Adam says at the risk of alienating everyone else, he'd like to talk to Todd about REM for a moment. Adam, we can talk about REM all you want to, buddy. I I never heard them personally. Well, they did do the soundtrack to uh, Man on the Moon, the Andy Kaufman movie. Yeah, one of my favorite movies. <laughs> I remember I remember when that movie came out, I remember seeing it, I remember nothing about it. It was, it was Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman. I know that, but yeah. I, I, he, was, he was on Taxi. Yeah. Okay, in red, I'd like to talk to, talk about, wait, I'd like Todd to talk about REM, okay. Oh, Todd, free, no. I, I can do that. Today is the, uh, today is the 40th anniversary of uh, REM's first show that they played in Athens, Georgia, in an old church. Just, just a sec, I'm, I'm going to go run some errands, I'll be back. <laughs> so anyway, REM was formed at the University of Georgia <laughs> when Michael Stipe, and Peter Buck discovered that they both had similar tastes in music, and Peter Buck was working at a record store. I can't remember the name of it, but I want to say it was something like the Wuxtry or something like that there in Athens. And it was a college town. 
They hooked up later with uh, Mike Mills, who played bass, and Bill Berry, the drummer. They had played in a lot of country and uh, southern rock cover bands, and they were looking to branch out and try something different. And R.E.M. was born. Okay, uh, sorry about that. What, what, were we, what were we talking about there? Well, anyway, after playing that first show in the church, Corey... <laughs> Uh, have you ever seen my wolf blade while we're talking about the wolf stuff? I have not seen your wolf blade. That is fantastic, though. It's got the flag on it. Corey Wolf Blade Green. Yeah, I, I like REM here and there. I like the, their older stuff. It's really fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, it was it was really fun at the time it came out because there wasn't it was it was uh, it was like. It, it was after punk, but new wave and like synthesizers were the big thing. And Mama says I can't listen to the punk. She said my hair, my hair will get all crazy if I do. No punk. What do you listen to, Austin? Uh, most, I, I listen to the the Riddick soundtracks. Which do you prefer, Pitch Black or Riddick? I like Chronicle, Chronicle the Riddick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, R.E.M., anyway, R.E.M., yes, wonderful band. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they, were, uh, they were a guitar band at a time when that was not, like, a cool thing to do. It's true. Very synthy. Hey, John. It was a very synthy, synthy, synthy uh, time, very new wave. Uh, it was the new romantic period. You had uh, Spandau Ballet and your Duran Durans and your haircut 100s. It was a, be a beautiful time for all. Your Depeche Modes. Wolf Blade. Yep. So anyway, what else? What else what's everybody got going on? Uh, I mean, we, we can... Continue to think about REM for, for uh, an hour or so? or Hey, I'll talk about the greatest American rock band for an hour. Uh, John, calls them, John calls them Depeche Commode. <laughs> oh, yes, you are, you are correct, Adam. He says there's a synthy version of Catapult out there. Catapult, Catapult is the uh, first song on side two of their debut album, Murmur. And uh, IRS Records originally set him up with Stephen Haig as their producer, who had produced all of the Pet Shop Boys albums up to that point. And he made the band play to, like, one of the metronome things, and he was very precise. And that, that ain't R.E.M., man. They were like, no, we don't play keep in perfect time, and that, that's not what we're about. And so he took the track, added some synthesizers to it against the band's wishes, and they went to our IRS. We're like, dude, this no, this is not what we're about. We're we're not a synthy band. We're we're a jangly melodic bass band with cryptic lyrics. And uh, so then they let them go to uh, Reflection Studios in North Carolina, where Mitch Easter and Don Dixon produced their debut album, which became the masterpiece that is Murmur. Sir, sir. Mr. Todd, sir. Uh, yes, Austin. Do you have a question about REM? Uh, yeah. Were they the ones that sang Dreamweaver? <laughs> yes. Mama says I can listen to that song. Oh, that's a good song. You should you should definitely listen to that. Says it'll make me more confident. <laughs> Oh, uh, John Worth has joined us. He wants me to talk about Radio Song with KRS-One. <laughs> yeah, the, that's the opening song on uh, R.E.M.'s Out of Time, which also contained Losing My Religion and Shiny Happy People. Uh, that's, one of those, that's one of those songs that does not hold up for me. Sorry to say. I love KRS-One. I love R.E.M., but it just doesn't hold up. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and fill this sucker all the way up tonight. Let's, let's do it. You're going to need it, buddy. <laughs> no, I, I, I like talking about the REM because here's what I've done today, Corey. I've, I don't know. I, here, I, of my own volition, I don't know what's happening to me. Of my own volition, I watched 
the Friday the 13th remake that came out a few years ago, the one that fucking Michael Bay produced. Look at the horror on Foot Foot's face. <laughs> I actually sat down in front of the TV and chose to watch the Friday the 13th remake produced by Michael Bay. What the fuck am I doing with myself? And I'm drinking wine. The, the, the road is affecting us all in many different ways. John, that's what I was drinking. I'm drinking JWM, bottle and bond, Kentucky bourbon whiskey. I'm drinking a Mezza Corona. This, the name of this wine, shit you not, is Mezza Corona. It's a Pinot Grigio from Italy. God damn it. I, I did see uh, Corona stop brewing beer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they, they stopped. I'm Hold on. Hold on a second. I need something else to drink. Entertain the folks, Corey. I'll be right back. So here's here's what I, I don't like about REM. All those shirts that he wore at, at the MTV Awards that year. Uh, uh, you just don't do that shit. You don't do it at all. And plus, most of their music sucks. Here's another thing. This is, this is an argument I've had with, with people for many years about bands, musicians, can you say they're a great band if most of their discography sucks? And I'm talking like, when you think about the Rolling Stones, yeah, they put out some great albums in the 60s and 70s, but they put out a shit ton of albums in the 80s, 90s, beyond that sucked ass. So you would say at least half their discography sucks. So how can you say they're a great band when most of their music sucks? I mean, as far as the Rolling Stones are concerned, there's just, uh, there's just like a handful of their albums that I listen to that are worth listening to, I think. Yeah, and there, there's plenty of band. If any band that's been around for for that long, I, I just don't. It, the same with with filmmakers, you know. Like if most of, like yeah, sure, you know, Coppola made The Godfather and The Conversation and Apocalypse Now, but he made some bullshit too. So how can can you call can you call an artist great when most of their output sucks? Did did were you talking about Coppola just now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at 70s, he was great. He did uh, Godfather Conversation, Godfather 2, Apocalypse Now. After that, things get really fucking sketchy. I mean, The Outsiders was okay. Rumblefish is okay. But then he starts doing shit like Twixt, where he's like, he's, he does like live performances where he's remixing the editing of the film. He just needs to shut up. All those guys did too much LSD. Found some booze. Uh... Adam asks if if, uh, if the hat Austin's wearing here, if that's a uh, Xbox game uh, based on the Doom Chapel War. <laughs> yeah, if you if you weren't with us last night, we we talked about uh, the wonderful locally produced film, uh, the Doom's Chapel Horror that Austin was the star in, um, but unfortunately, they 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 put him in this shirt for most of the running time of the movie. And it's the worst goddamn shirt I've ever seen. And we talked about it for a while last night before the feed, uh, uh, the stream totally ate shit, but... Man. Adam says, uh, from the heart rules. What is that? That's a... One from the heart. That's a Coppola movie. That's, that's the one he uh, directed from an RV. Oh, okay. He, he never left the RV. He was like, I've got to, like the state of the art RV. I don't have to like actually interact in person with the actors or the crew. I can sit in this RV and eat pasta and drink wine and simultaneously direct a movie. God, he's yeah. That's what I'm saying. The dude sucks. <laughs> so I'm saying, like you know, talking about REM being the greatest band, their later albums were not very good. Um, they made they made a couple of not good albums, but uh, I would argue that uh, their final two, right before they split up, they got their mojo back and did a couple of damn good albums. But that's just me. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's like Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan sucks. Most of his music sucks. I, Bob Dylan as a person kind of sucks. Oh yeah, I agree. I don't I don't like any. I don't like the cut of his jib at all. <laughs> Austin says it's a combat game, but there are no attack buttons. There's only one button that you push to fold like a bitch. <laughs> it's very true. Uh, I, I, I did find some more uh, more wonderful screenshots from the film today. 
Um, and I'll, I'll give you guys a little, little context if you haven't seen the film. And, and it's not really spoilers. Uh, I would never want to do that for anybody. Um, but this is Austin getting his ass. I mean, the entire, uh, uh, you know, a 90, 100 minute runtime is pretty much Austin just getting his ass kicked repeatedly. Um, as, as you can see, the guy is, is simply holding him by the nape of his neck like he would a, like a, an unruly cat. And uh, Austin just buckles. And I suspect it has to do with the shirt. There, there's actually a scene in the movie where that same character is inside a pickup truck, and he reaches out of the pickup truck and grabs Austin, and Austin just drops. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. It, it's, it... Austin's on his own two feet outside the truck. The dude is inside the truck, reaches out the window, and grabs him, and he's just like, ah, and, and he's done. Yeah. He folds like a bitch. I mean, this is the, the other guy is definitely my favorite character of the film because he just whips Austin's ass repeatedly. Um, here, here, you know, he goes from holding him like a cat. He pulls out a blade. Austin's still uh, just kind of wildly flailing as, as, as if he doesn't know what to do. Um, I, w I wish he would have used the wolf blade. If, if well. They could introduce that in the sequel, Doom's Chapel Horror Two: Wolf Blade. The the secret of the Wolf Blade. <laughs> the uh, I mean that's not all. There's another. There's another great scene. Um, you know, Austin. He, he's the prodigal son. He he comes home after being away. He kind of left in shame because he because uh, his uh, stupidity murdered his brother. Um, Again, not a spoiler. That's the beginning of the film, but he comes back and uh, he he finally he, he meets his mother, and you can tell the. Dis <laughs> so this is basically what, what what's happening in this emotional beat is her seeing him wearing that shirt for the first time, and you can see how. She I mean, she's just like, "God damn it, son." <laughs> Why are you wearing that shirt, boy? It's a remarkable performance, uh, really restrained on her part. Uh, because I mean, if, if my son came home like that, I just, I just throttle him immediately. By the way, Corey, we've been joined by Doom Chapel horror producer Chris Bauer. Yeah, Chris, who like the, you? You gotta let, let me t let me tell you a little bit about filmmaking, son. Don't put anybody in that shirt. Rule number one. So the the scene progresses, and uh, his daddy, he ain't he ain't as understanding as mama. By the way, everybody in that family wears nothing but denim except for Austin. Um, Austin, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what the dad's doing. The dad's like this. Dad's like, God damn it, boy! I done bought you all the denim shirts you could possibly wear, and you still wear that striped monstrosity. What the fuck, son? I, I I would do I would I would tan his hide if I was him. I'd I'd make him go cut a switch. God damn it, boy! You take that shirt off and meet me at the woodshed. <laughs> oh no! I don't want to know what happens in the woodshed. Chris Chris is bla Chris being the producer of this film is blaming it on wardrobe. You're the producer. You're in charge of everything. Here he is. <laughs> It's a wonderful film, except for that goddamn shirt. So you know, there's a lot to love in that film. Oh, just, just the shirt. You were obviously high as hell, Chris. Yes, I can see that. Hi, Toby. They they showed up on set and they're like, "Okay, we're we're putting our lead actor in this bizarrely striped shirt with a V neck," and and nobody had anything to say about it. Here's how fucked up it is, Corey. Yeah. I played like three different bit parts in that movie. I was basically an extra and got three much better costumes than the lead character. I mean, you could have been nude from head to toe. You could have been in your damn birthday suit the whole time, and it would have been a better costume. I mean, ugh, I just... It's upsetting, and, and like it's it's so like the the width uh, we talked about it last night, but the width of the stripes makes no sense to me. It, I mean, look at that! You, 
the stripes start on the arm. Right. They come across the chest and continue on to the other arm. Yeah, it's, it, it reminds me of uh, 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 the fifth element, Lilu Dallas's costume she wears. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just covering the breast just enough, a uh, little bit on the arms for some reason. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what Austin's holding in that picture? A multi-pass. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay. Well, we're having a great time. Again, if you guys if you guys want to uh, talk about anything, if you want to talk about any subjects, have any questions, any whatever, whatever's bothering you, if if you need relationship advice, just you know you came to the right place. Oh, absolutely! And I hope everybody's wearing their quarantine hats. Yes, I added some new flair. I've got many buttons, so this is a uh, band called Her Heron and Crane out of Bowling. Uh. Doom's Chapel Horror producer Chris Bauer says that shirt is from the Baby Gap Chain Gang collection. The the husky section of Baby Gap. The, if, knowing how large a man Chris Bauer is, that was probably his uh, uh, his onesie he wore in 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 uh, when he was like three. I, I would imagine he was a large baby. Yeah. Oh hey, uh, the the guy who cuts my hairs has logged on. What's up, Brandon? That's crazy. The guy who cuts my hair is here too, because it's me. Because I cut my own shit, and that's why I look good. Mmm, you sexy. Mm hmm. So what else? What else do you want to talk about? Uh, you want to do? Uh, you want to do an edition of the record roundup real quick? Goddamn right. Whoosh. Whoosh. Todd, record roundup. You know, everybody, we're in quarantine. We're self-isolating. And uh, music is very important for when you're doing this. So uh, I, every time we do this, I pull a few records from my personal collection just to, uh, you know, give you some recommendations for what you can listen to when you're quarantined. I any goddamn REM records on there. We. First up, we have the k compilation, Wings of Sound. Ooh, that's pretty. Isn't it, though? It's a compilation album from uh, the late 70s. Check out this lineup. It's got Michael Jackson, Cool in the Gang, Blondie, Nick Lowe. Pretty good so far, right? KC and the Sunshine Band. There's ABBA. And for some reason, right in the... Right in the middle of all that, Bob goddamn Dylan. <laughs> He's always got to cram his, his, his noise in there. <laughs> They've got Bob Dylan crammed between an ABBA song and a Sniffin' the Tears song on the wings of sound. What, what year was that? Was that in the 70s, he said? Yeah, 1979. And it was, it was Bob Dylan doing... Gotta serve somebody, which was when he was going through his Christian phase. Bob Dylan got born again in the in the late seventies and became a Christian, even though he's Jewish. Well, it makes it makes sense because you know he he, he just put out that that new epic uh, forty nine minute song about the JFK assassination. That's that's kind of how he writes music. So in the seventies, he would have been writing about biblical times, trying to stay current. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, that uh, that JFK assassination song, it's actually longer than Oliver Stone's JFK movie. Goddamn. Next up, while you're cooped up in your house and uh, you want to take a little mental escape from your family or whatever you got going on there, take a trip to Miami with the Miami Vice soundtrack. Mm. Jan Hammer instrumentals. Phil Collins in the air tonight, and Glenn Fry. Look, look, they're they're glowing. They're glowing. They have they have neon halos around Crockett and Tubbs there. I've been I've been to Miami. That's how people look. By the way, uh, Corey, did you ever see the uh, um, the theatrical Miami Vice with Colin Farrell and Jamie Foxx? Yeah, Michael Mann. Yeah, what'd you think? Very good. 
Okay, haven't haven't seen it yet. Might have to watch that while I'm quarantined. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Got one more record, and this one, not so much the music, just this is one of the most amazing album covers I've ever seen in my life. Austin, you got you got something? Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I just I just enjoy being here with my friends. Well, we're glad you're here, buddy. Hey, thanks. Once again, one of the greatest album covers of all time. Oh, Loggins. Kenny Loggins, keep the fire. <laughs> He's holding a glowing sphere, a crystal ball, if you will. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's the orb that uh, Trump and everybody touched in Saudi Arabia that time. You are correct, sir. Yeah. Keep keep up with the news. I do. God damn, he looked like Jesus. His entire fucking band looked like Jesus. <laughs> this is disciples. Look at the hair on that feller. That's Bartholomew. <laughs> anyway, whoosh, that's Todd's record roundup, buckaroos. You, you said Michael Jack. I don't want to step on your toes, but you said Michael Jackson, and I was listening to this record last night, and I think it's a good. I'll be right back. All right. I, I did yes, Joel, Smuggler's Blues. That is on the Miami Vice soundtrack. You are correct, sir. That's an amazing song. I did, a, I did a random shelf pull of uh, to listen to music last night, and I had a great time listening to the soundtrack to The Wiz. It's wonderful. If you haven't seen The Wiz, it's uh, Michael Jackson plays the Scarecrow. Uh, Diana Ross is Dorothy. Nipsey Russell's the Tin Man, and I can't remember the dude's name who plays the lion. Man, I can't either, but uh, isn't uh, doesn't Richard Pryor play the Wiz himself? He does, and actually, the, uh, the actor, uh, that's Bart the Bear playing Toto. A, a young Bart the Bear. But this, is, this soundtrack is kick-ass. Quincy Jones produced it. I had, a, I had a wonderful time, drunk as hell, listening to this. I watched that movie a lot when I was a kid. It was on TV a lot. And this is like this is like four four albums. It's a lot of music. I had a I had a great time. Uh, Austin, have you ever seen have, have you ever seen The Wiz, Austin? That was at sir. I can't say I have seen The Wiz. My parents don't let uh, uh, parents don't let me watch much, and that looks a little uh, that, that looks a little too urban. Well, uh, well, you should check. It. Did you did you like the Wizard of Oz, Austin? I, I'm in Gryffindor. Bullshit! You're Hufflepuff. Again, Gryffindor. You want to know who my Patronus is? Oh, please. It it's a turtle. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, we're just having a good time. <laughs> uh -oh. uh oh. Oh, wait, there we go. Okay, you were froze up for a minute there, buddy. Uh oh. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. The, the internet's acting 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 wild and crazy and I don't like it oh now they're just foot foot okay here several people joining us again hello folks welcome back Hey. Oh, we're back. All right. Hey. Hey. What's up? Hey. I, I think I think I figured out where the problem's coming from. Hillary. Makes a lot of sense, buddy. Hillary did it. Yep. 
Oh, Joel's not getting any audio. From, from either of us? I don't know. Weird. I like how when I turn my head like this, the shards of light come right down. It's really I bisect my quarantine hat. Yeah. Dan's got audio. So it sounds like old Hillary got to Joel's phone too. Oh god damn it. <laughs> Austin says special thanks to Instagram for helping protect his standing. Uh <laughs> Hello, Joe. There's Joseph Rumsey. He's, he's a good man. Once again, hope everyone has their quarantine hats. And feel free to have a cocktail with us. Have yourself a drink. Get you a beer or some bourbon or a delightful Pinot Grigio. This is one of them there uh, virtual happy hours folks be talking about. That's right. Because we're happy and we can only stay on for an hour. Yeah. Joseph's uh, uh, quieted up. He's got his, his Q hat on, his quiet. So I, I did want to talk, like, I, I thought about this while we were talking about uh, The Wiz um, and, and fantasy movies in general. And I'm sure you've heard about this, Todd, and I'm sure many people watching have heard about when, when – uh, when the Beatles wanted to make a Lord of the Rings movie, yeah, so they were they were obviously on a lot of drugs at the time. It was after, so they, they signed a three movie deal. They did Help, Hard Day's Night, and they never made the third one. But they wanted to do for the third one, uh, Lord of the Rings. They approached Stanley Kubrick to direct it. He told him to fuck off, and he made two thousand one instead. But uh, pretty good choice on his part, I gotta say. Yeah, you don't want the fucking sitar era of the Beatles coming up to you wanting to make a psychedelic version of Lord of the Rings. So, fucking, you know, but no. <laughs> Gandalf playing a sitar. That's what Nobody it, wants that. That's what it would have been, too. Cause, so they were going to cast uh, uh, George uh, Harrison was going to be Gandalf. Uh, Paul was playing Frodo, Ringo was playing Samwise, which is pretty damn good casting, and John was going to play play Gollum. I I, I got to say the casting was dead on. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really it's actually not that bad. Um, I can only imagine what kind of shitty mid sixties prosthetics they would have put on John. I'm not gonna lie, but a the Beatles and Lord and Lord of the Rings directed by Stanley Kubrick, I would have watched it. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, for sure. They, they, they but it, it just it, it's a testament to uh, it's a testament to Stanley Kubrick that he's probably one of the only people that they could have approached who would have at that time told the Beatles to fuck off. Well, the uh, another fun little anecdote is the uh, at that time Tolkien Tolkien was still alive and he he hadn't sold the rights yet, so the Beatles were trying to get him. Tolkien hated the Beatles, like and uh, apparently they had a practice space like three three uh, doors down from his house and he would hear it, and it said it was just the worst noise he's ever heard in his life. But yeah, like if if they would have waited for like. Somebody like Yodorowsky to make that movie. That was oh, he would have jumped on it. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. I'll bet. Tolkien hated the Beatles as much as he did black people. <laughs> did Tolkien hate black people? Oh no. Well, I mean, it, there's not there's not a lot of black people in the books. He was he was white and British. Yeah. Well. What an asshole. I'm just guessing, kind of, but that probably. I was about to say, where, where, did, where did that stem from? If you were white and alive in the 40s, odds are. Yeah, but I was going to say, like, did, did, I, I can't see him becoming that way in World War One or anything. like. Especially, especially the fucking British, man. Those imperialist, colonial fucking bastards. 
I, not that America is any better, but uh, we were just kind of following, you know, the British template that they had laid out for us as far as imperial conquest. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's... Wine does weird shit to me, man. I don't know why I'm talking about this shit. The... Todd, Todd's all Pinot Grigio'd up and going going on some some epic rants about <laughs> colonial the colonial Europe. Well, uh, go talk to India, Corey. <laughs> yeah, here. So I, I I thought about this too, like some other other casting that would have been period specific for the for the Beatles Lord of the Rings movie. And I thought of the, the the perfect person to play Sauron, of course the the embodiment of evil in the series, and uh, you would have to cast the most evil musician of all time, who is uh, Jerry Garcia. And then with, when when they finally defeat him, the Grateful Dead break up forever. This. Is, this is just a dream I'm, I'm having. That would that would be a beautiful movie. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually getting a little uh, getting a little uh, emotional, tearing up a little bit over the thought of that. Yeah, they 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 actually they throw Jerry Garcia into the volcano. Everybody wins. The Beatles win, defending Middle Earth or what have you. And Jerry Garcia is gone forever, and we we never have to. There's no fish. Never happens. Widespread panic never happens. Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews. So many smells. We nobody ever has to smell because of this. There's yeah, patchouli. Just patchouli. Patchouli goes away forever. Oh no, Todd's freezing up. Oh, oh, he's back. Patchouli gone forever. The CBD industry never happens. And I, I think on that timeline, we probably don't have to deal with coronavirus. Absolutely not. The, the world is a utopia without the Grateful Dead in it. <sighs> the new people are joining. I'm having trouble seeing because Todd's got a supernova behind his head, but some people are, <laughs> are coming in. <laughs> hey, hold on. Oh, okay. That's, that's a little better. Let me let me do this. Okay, you got uh, Kelsey and Rebecca. Hello, y'all. I hope everybody's wearing their quarantine hat, which are uh, doubled as, as prayer hats today. Hold on, Corey. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a lighting adjustment. Okay. You give everybody a quick foot foot update. She's still uh, motionless. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, there we go. Now I can see your your pretty eyes. So my mom my mom was texting me earlier. And she was like, uh, just asking how things were in Kentucky. She, you know, my mom was in Pennsylvania, and uh, she's like, "Yeah, I, I don't go out, so I, I don't drink anymore. I don't do anything." And I'm like, "Well, I've been drinking a lot." And she's like, "Well, I'm gonna make a drink then." <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. What a good son you are. Oh yeah, she needs a drink. She lives in Pennsylvania City up there. She does. She does live on top of a mountain, though. There's like no way she's gonna get roamed. Oh no! It. Yeah, she's fine. Uh, Anybody got any uh, questions? Any comments? Uh, tell us what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're listening to. Yeah. What do What do you guys What are you guys watching? I know you guys are all binging and watching movies and watching watching the television programs. Once again, I, today, of my own volition, chose to watch the Friday the 13th remake produced by Michael Bay. I did not watch that. Watch I have Criterion Edition Blu-rays that I've not watched yet and still went to Netflix and clicked on the Friday the 13th remake produced by Michael Bay. Yeah, for you once. I have been watching Fleabag. It's a wonderful show. Fleabag is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I love the shit out of it. Yep. Very good. Very funny. Very well written. Some, some great, just laugh out loud comedic stuff. 
Joseph's watching The Outsider on HBO. I, I did not. Todd, you watched it, didn't you? I uh, yes, I've seen uh, every episode. I was a fan. It's good. It's not great, but uh, it's it's decent. Yeah. Joseph says Fleabag is wonderful. I I honestly, if I met someone who was like, "Yeah, watch that Fleabag show," it wasn't shit. I'd be like. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Every every other opinion they held at that point would be suspect. Right. It's like I've, I've look. I've got a lot of friends who listen to, uh, to to jam bands and Grateful Dead and stuff like that, and I and I love them. I love them dearly. But I will, you know, if if it comes down to you know, if you're getting on the lifeboats in the Titanic, I'm I'm picking them last. You know what I'm saying? But I love them. But I will sacrifice them for. I mean, you know, gum and their 20 minute long space rock jazz explorations. But I don't have that kind of time. Even even in quarantine, I don't have time to listen to a 20 minute long fucking song of, you know, noodling. Yeah, you're watching the uh, Friday the 13th remake. Which, which is an excellent use of my time. <laughs> what else is happening, y'all? We ain't got all night. We ain't got all night to dick around with you people. Yep, my phone's on 40%. We're, we, get, we got busy lives. Uh-oh, my neighbors are home. They're walking upstairs. That, that means we'll, we'll hear them, them shitting. Their shit... Gushing through my walls any moment. You need to you need to put a microphone on that pipe <laughs> so we can hear it during the live stream. Yeah, if if it happens again, I'll try. I'm I'm a mere four feet away. I'll try to rush over and let you guys hear that because it's you know I'm I'm in a small apartment, so I, I definitely I definitely notice every time it happens. Well, I guess uh I, I could do a, a random DVD pull. That's always delightful. Damn, can't get nothing. Oh, this is great too. This is the second Coen Brothers movie in a row. Look at that. Inside Lewin Davis. Yeah, Poe goddamn Damron. D despite it being about folk rock, it's really good. <laughs> it's an excellent movie. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched this in a long time. I may, I may rewatch this soon. And it's got a kitty. A cat plays very heavily into the story. All right, here's a here's a good here's a good topic for conversation. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Um, of course, I think it's well established. Anybody who's listened to the Ingenious Bastards podcast or who just knows Corey and I personally knows that we love the Cohen Brothers. Yeah. Um, Cohen Brothers movies that you don't like. Hmm. I mean, their their worst movies are better than most movies. So, I mean, I mean, really, like Intolerable Cruelty is the only one I would say is not that great. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's their attempt at a straightforward romantic comedy kind of thing. Um, but it, it's not horrendous. I mean, it's not. I've, I've seen it. I'll probably never watch. It's it. not Michael Bay's Friday the Thirteenth. No, I've seen it. I'll probably never watch it again. But even like you know, the, a lot of people say the Lady Killers is like one of their their worst movies, and it's still pretty damn fun. The Lady Killers is funny as shit. Yep. Yeah. Well, you got Tom Hanks and Marlon Wayans in there. I mean, it's I got a lot of love for that movie. Um, one that uh, one that I watched once that uh, I've never watched again. I kind of liked it when I saw it, but there was nothing about it that made me want to see it again. Was uh, the Billy Bob Thornton uh, black and white? movie what was that one the man who wasn't there the man who the man who wasn't there yeah that's a good, it's all right i've got i've got it I, and I, I i saw it on my shelf the other day and i was like i need to rewatch that one too i would like to see it again because like i said i was i didn't i mean i didn't dislike it but it's not been it's one of theirs that i've never watched a second time and usually with most coen brothers movies i watch them multiple times yeah 
and then they're they're talking about like in earnest now. I don't know if you saw that article. They're they're talking. In they're doing an earnest movie. Uh, Jim Varney has passed, but uh, they're they're wanting to do. They're they're going to legit do a Big Lebowski se sequel now. And but it's going to be he he's given up on bowling and he just plays uh, disc golf. That makes sense. It makes perfect sense. There, there is a uh, isn't Totoro doing like a like a Jesus, the Jesus role? Thing? Yeah, it's a, it it's already came out. It's a sequel. Oh. Yeah, it's a it's it's a pseudo sequel spinoff. It's more of a spinoff with uh, the Jesus character that Turturro plays. But I saw that trailer and I didn't know if it was a real movie or if it was just one of those fake trailers that they made. Oh yeah, it, well I mean they're they're he's friends with the Coens and he asked their blessing if he could do that and uh, yeah he did. It's kind of based on some other book or something, but he threw the Jesus character. I have no idea. But yeah, those are really the only uh, Coen Brothers movies that that come to mind where I'm just like you know yeah whatever. Like I said, but even their worst stuff is better than most. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I might, I might put um, to a lesser degree. I might put Hail Caesar into that, into that group. I mean, Hail, I, I like Hail Caesar, but it's not one of my favorites of theirs. Yeah, there's, even, like I said, even their less. Like I love uh, Burn After Reading is entertaining as shit. Yeah, and it's got Brad Pitt. Yeah, and we all we we've established. I like Brad Pitt. Uh, Austin asks, uh, whatever happened to that movie about the Jewish police officer that was in development for a bit uh, that the Coen brothers were supposed to make? I don't know, Austin. I haven't talked to them. <laughs> I don't know. No. I'll shoot out an email. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah I'll, I'll, I'm going to hit them up on TikTok. I do remember them that, that they were making a movie like that, though, at one point. And... Yeah. God damn. Why, why is everybody texting me right now? And it's work shit. I'm drinking whiskey. I'm not drinking beer right now. Well, what else, what else you guys got? You guys are all, all quiet. It's, it's like quiet as a quiet as a church in here. Do you guys, are you guys wor worshiping, having your own little Sunday mass at home, all quiet? And... They're in Bible study, Corey. Yeah. They're praying. My wife said they're praying. Everybody, everybody's all, everybody's all pensive tonight. What's happening? You guys, you guys can talk to us. Is, are you guys having problems at home? Do you, you need me to get the fucking wolf dagger out? I don't know. I think. I'll, no, I think I'll, there, Corey. I just prayed for content. Okay, thank you. Hope that helps. I mean, it might have something to do, like, the, the first interaction we've had in a few minutes was Austin asking a, a, a serious question, and we just shat on him. <laughs> we, we, we have this problem on the podcast. We're always asking for people to give us comments, questions, and then whatever they do, we just mock them mercilessly. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm going to try to do, Corey? Since, uh, everybody, since everybody, hopefully, is in quarantine and self-isolating, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get some more celebrity inserta bears. I think the time is right for more inserta bears. Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, Joseph Rumsey just made comment, made content in his pants. Oh, bang. oh boy, Joseph, you little rapscallion. He's a rascal. Yeah. Well, I don't have well. I've got some. I've got some stuff to talk about, but it's probably too too late in the game for that because it, it might be a longer conversation. You want to save that for the next one? We'll save it for the next one. All right. Uh, I, I guess we better shut it. We're pushing an hour here, and, and I, All right. I suspect things are are going to start eating shit any moment now, like it has been. So it's uh, every everyone in Paducah is logging on to the internet. Stupid people. Write a write a damn book. Listen to a record. Yeah. Take some photos. Yeah. Take a shit in my neighbor's turlet. Do some needlepoint. That's right. All right. We're, we're going to get off here. You guys be safe. Keep doing what you're doing because you're all still going. So. We love you. God bless you all.